Hi everybody and thanks for joining us. My name is Alexandra Jones and I'm a law clerk here at Cali. Today I will be showing you a quick presentation outlining one of our major projects from the summer. So our task here was to gather information about available court forms and figure out if these forms are being automated for users or if they're made available in another way. We decided to stick to just 52 jurisdictions, so we did every state plus Washington, D.C., and Guam. The main focus of this task was to see how frequently A to J author was being used, and then if there was not an A to J author interview available, then we would look elsewhere. So the top 25 forms that we counted can be seen here. Um, I'm not going to make you guys read every single one or go through every single one. But the main focus here is that a lot of them are very simple, civil, and family law-based things like child support, divorces, name changes, things that everyday people need to go to a courthouse or might need an attorney to assist them, but they might not be able to easily access those things, especially during a time of a global pandemic. Of all the forms that we have, we found that 18% of the 25 most popular ones were automated either with or without A to J author. And I would like to note that these numbers do not include forms that were automated with hot docs. It was either a traditional A to J interview or some other type of automated system. And then of those forms that we found, 10% were made by A to J authors. And again, just note that those do not include any um, interviews that you might have that would be made with hot docs. So here we have a graph that shows all of the forms that we had and how they're broken up. But I really want to focus on the orange, yellow, and purple bars you see in the middle. Those are forms that are either non-fillable PDFs, fillable PDFs, and Word docs. And you might be wondering, you know, why is that important? I thought we were here to talk about A to J, but don't worry, we'll get to that shortly. So here is just a quick overview of the states that are using A to J author the most. And we found that Michigan and Illinois had about half or over half of their forms. For Michigan, the forms that they did not have available um, in an A to J guided interview, we were still able to find those forms elsewhere, whether that be on their legal aid site or the court website. And in Illinois, the forms that we could not find with A to J author, it seemed like those forms were also missing from other common points that pro se litigants might look to. So again, that legal aid or that court website. Arkansas, Hawaii, Kansas, Kentucky, and New York are the ones that are coming up in the rear with the number of forms that they have automated, and then the remaining states have four or less each. So of the forms that are automated with A to J author, the top three, or I guess five, <laughs> that were automated the most were divorce, and whether that is with or without minor children, name changes for both adults and minors, and then fee waivers. A lot of states, even if they only had a couple of A to J interviews, tended to have these things because for the most part, they are pretty simple, especially if a divorce, you know, is uncontested. You can go through pretty quickly and easily with an interview. We only found two forms that had no A to J guided interviews. The first was post-conviction relief, and then the second was SNAP or food assistance applications. However, for SNAP, that typically is handled through the state, so we weren't necessarily too surprised about that. And here I'm just going over those top three to five forms that I mentioned previously. And again, I want to put that focus on that yellow, orange, and purple bars that show the PDFs and the Word docs. As you see, A to J is the highest sole form for divorces, but there's still a lot of room for growth within those PDFs and those Word docs. Here for the name change, most name change forms were actually fillable PDFs then non-fillable PDFs, and then A to J. So again, just keep in mind those three bars. And then for fee waiver, the same kind of pattern followed from the name changes where fillable PDFs were number one. So after culminating all of this information, what we really needed to look at is whether or not states are automating in the way that we think they are. So yes and no. 
For the yes, SNAP applications were the only forms that every jurisdiction had available. And again, that's because that's usually handled through the state or the county, not something that doesn't necessarily need to go through a court or a legal aid system. Child support was next, and only one state did not have any type of form available, whether that be through Law Health Interactive, through their legal aid, or through that state court website. And in order for Orders of protection were next, and they were available in all but two jurisdictions. However, on the flip side, 35% of the total forms that we were looking for were simply unavailable. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't exist somewhere, but it wasn't an easy task for us to find those where we know pro se litigants tend to go looking. You know, they'll type in Google, Order of Protection, Ohio. And, you know, the court website will come up, maybe a legal aid website, and they don't really know to do a lot of further digging like we might know. And then to follow that, 16% of the total forms were not fillable PDFs. And while it's great to have that form available in some format, as we're seeing through this pandemic, people might not necessarily have access to the internet in their homes. They might not have access to a printer and they might be reliant on going to a library or going to their school. So if the only way they can fill this form out is by having access to the internet and then having access to a printer to fill it out by hand, that might not necessarily be the most helpful thing. So what does this all mean? As I mentioned a couple of times, there's a major global pandemic going on right now. It shut down our court systems and it left citizens leaning on technology to have access to legal help. And because of that, some states are showing a desire to begin automating their forms to make that a little bit easier. And I know that this may seem like a daunting task, but it really can be simple. So as I mentioned a couple times before, focusing on those forms that are available as PDFs in Word, we have sample exercises on the AJ Author website that show you how to take a non-fillable PDF and turn it into an A to J form. And the same thing with a Word doc. You can easily save a Word doc as a non-fillable PDF and then go through that same process. So if you just take a look at our website here, you'll see we have guided interviews that show you how to make a simple text template and turn that into an automated form. We have ones that show you how to make PDF templates and turn that into a form. We even have ones that have multiple forms that would be in one guided interview. So for example, name changes often have a lot of different forms that come with them. It's not necessarily just one petition with a motion in an order. There are some extra steps that need to be taken. You can still get that all automated from a simple non-fillable PDF. So in the end, the goal obviously is for all of us to work together and make access to justice much more accessible for people. We appreciate you coming here and showing that you are trying to make access to justice accessible, and we hope that you have a great day.